Welcome, my name is Mark, and this video is uh, sponsored in part by Xtool, uh, the makers of the uh, M1 laser engraver, which we're going to be using today. Uh, now we're going to be laser engraving on stainless steel. Uh, this is a uh, sugar and coffee that we use every morning. So I've cleaned them out, uh, dumped out everything, uh, and we're going to laser engrave um, what they are, so sugar and coffee. Now, how do you laser engrave stainless steel? If you engrave it without processing the steel itself um, by adding something to it, you can actually etch stainless steel, although it's not very dark, it's kind of brownish. So what we're going to be using today is uh, Rust-Oleum's Cold Galvanized Compound. Uh, so I did a video last week, two weeks ago, on engraving stain, uh, sorry, engraving um, tiles, white tiles. And for that, we actually used another Rust-Oleum product, uh, which is the, uh, the white gloss paint, which has titanium in it, uh, which my understanding is the laser hits it and burns and etches that titanium to the tile itself. Same kind of thing with this. Uh, this is enriched with zinc. So my thought there is the zinc reacts uh, and bonds to the stainless steel. I did try painting the white on the stainless steel, uh, but it didn't work at all. <laughs> so yeah, it, it may work if you use the cold galvanized compound on the tile. I haven't quite tried that yet. Uh, but what you want to do whenever you're, uh, whenever you're um, testing a new material is you want to make a grid pattern. Uh, so this here uh, is a grid pattern that I did for the, um, the tile. So you can see there uh, how you've got uh, you know, too much speed or too much power on the bottom. Uh, and uh, you, know, you can kind of get an idea as to what speed you want. So on this tile I could go 50 speed, 100 power uh, on there and I should get a nice black. Now, I did the same thing with stainless steel, but of course I didn't have, didn't have any scrap stainless steel kicking around. So, we've got a few dogs and our Bernese Mountain Dog has a nice stainless steel bowl. So I didn't think he would mind if I actually um, engraved on the bottom here. Um, so, by looking at that, it looks like we've got a good speed at 100 and power at 100, right up here at the top. Now, of course, with projects, if you're ever getting into making lots of products, say you're, you're making um, a bunch of stainless steel mugs for a football team or for your place of work or, or wherever, you want to try to do it as fast as possible, right? With the best results. So, you know, I could run it at 40 speed and 70 power, but um, I want to go for the 100 and 100-100. Uh, so that's what we're going to do today. So the first step is to clean the outside of this with isopropyl alcohol, uh, just to get any uh, grease from fingerprints or uh, whatever else is on it off. Uh, and then from there, we're going to put two coats of that Rust-Oleum um, compound, the uh, cold galvanized compound, which is essentially paint used um, for steel, uh, for steel posts and steel galvanized where maybe traditional paint doesn't stick to, uh, and that's what that's for. So we'll get started and uh, apply two coats to this. So I have now completed my, uh, I put two coats on, uh, so you can see it's a, you know, it's not on the back. Uh, but it's on, you know, three quarters of the way around. I don't know, uh, I don't know how far I'm going to go. Uh, but what I thought about doing is because they're two different size containers, uh, if you don't have a set of calipers yet, these are digital calipers, uh, and they'll give you a nice, accurate uh, size. Uh, you can pick them up for like, I don't know, you can probably get them for like 15, 20 bucks. Um, so I figured since they're two different size containers, what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep the size of my engraving consistent with the sizes. So the larger one will have a little bit larger and the smaller one will have a little bit smaller. So what I came up with was the size of 
uh, across, so the diameter of it. So I'm getting a diameter here of 104.45. Uh, so we'll call it 105 millimeters. And if we go to 105 millimeters, you can see it's going to be basically this size on here, right? Now we also need uh, that 105 because we have to tell it the, uh, the diameter or circumference so it can calculate. I assume the M1, what it does is it calculates uh, if your printing is too long and it goes, it's wrapped around, uh, it'll probably give you a warning and say, not too long. Uh, so they ask for that information. So 105 is what we'll go with on there. All right, so we're gonna load this into the uh, RA2 rotary tool. Uh, there's two different ways you can uh, hook it up. Uh, this is a little bit larger, so I'm going to use the rollers. Uh, there is a chuck as well. So if you're doing, for example, a pen, if you want to engrave a pen, or if you want to engrave maybe a ring, you can use the chuck to, uh, to get down to those sizes. Uh, so we'll load this up. So we want to place it here. There is a red laser. Uh, so we want to put that red laser dead center right at the top of it. I don't know if you can see that. I've done some recording before where you can't actually see it. it. might be because it's on the black. So I am going to go, uh, let's say, right around there. Now the stainless steel should be heavy enough. Uh, if you're doing a lighter glass, um, I've heard some people put a rice bags or, or something to that effect in there to weigh it down. Uh, so we should be good on here. Okay, we're all lined up. We look like we're square. We'll bring it over to the uh, program and then we'll make sure it is all squared up and it's set up properly. There we are. Uh, we have our um, RA2 rotary tool. Uh, you'll notice that there's some wood in here. I actually had to raise up the machine a little bit more uh, because our auto measure. So uh, the laser that's hitting on this surface here, if we click auto measure, uh, it will determine the distance between the surface and where the laser needs to be. Uh, but first, uh, actually what we want to do is uh, we want to change this laser flat to cylindrical because we are using the rotary tool. And this line here, uh, I've seen some people in some forums, uh, they move it right to the edge here. Uh, you don't want to do that. You want it to the top of whatever you're engraving. Now what I've done is I've taken a piece of tape, masking tape here, uh, and I've uh, marked out where the top dead center is. So we will pull that over right to that tape because you want to be engraving on the top flat surface. You don't want it uh, to be um, off the side. You'll get a warped image. Uh, we'll hit the auto measure again because I switched to laser cylindrical and it may move. It did. There it is. So we're at 13.4. Oh, and it shifted back for me. That's nice. Okay, so there we go. Um, we are in range um, and uh, we just need our project. So we'll go over. Uh, this one is the coffee. It's the smaller one. So we'll drag that out. And it's just pulling the image in. All right, there we go. Now, since our top is here on this side, we're going to have to flip this around. So we're going to rotate it uh, 180 degrees. And we want to uh, enlarge it a little bit because it's a little small. So what did I say? 105, I think. Which that is quite big now that I'm looking at it. I may reduce that size a little bit. Uh, so I'll use that and I'll subtract, let's say, 15. Let's go to 90. Yeah, I think that's a little bit nicer. You want to make sure your this locked uh, tool here is actually engaged and showing locked. Uh, so it changes both your height and your width uh, in relation to each other. Now, um, if you can see here, there's a grid on the background. So we've got two blocks here. Actually, we've got two blocks there, so that's good. And you want to keep your image on the lighter side of this. Uh, if your image is over here, it'll give you an error when you try to proceed. Um, and um, it 
won't do anything until you move it over on this side. All right, so that is that. So we got our auto measure done. Uh, our, uh, we're in roller, we're not using the chuck, so we've got that good. Uh, user defined material, uh, I am uh, inputting my own. There are some presets, uh, but we know down here that we want to be at 100, and we want to be at 100. Uh, and that should give us a nice dark black. Uh, so that's about it. So now we want to um, frame it out. So we'll click on this process. And let's see if we can get a good look at this now. Okay. Of course it casts the shadow on it. It's coming over rotates over that way, goes back. Yeah, it's a little tough to see uh, through the camera, uh, but uh, it, uh, it's on the painted surface, which is what's important. So framing is complete, uh, and we will simply hit start. All right, so we're all ready. We've got a flashing light here, and we will go uh, and let the laser take its uh, take its time here doing its work. Uh, it's probably, I would say, going to take 20 minutes. Uh, we'll see uh, see how long it does take. Ha ha ha! There we go. There it is, coffee etched in. Uh, now what we'll do is we will clean this uh, compound off, the spray paint, uh, with uh, what I've found works best is acetone, so a solvent. Um, for this anyway, uh, it'll take it right off. It is smelly, so you wanna use it in a well-ventilated area. So we'll go and we'll do that. So we got it cleaned up and you can look on here, actually on camera, it doesn't look too bad. Uh, but the top of it is slightly lighter than the bottom of it. So the reason for that is as I was cleaning it off, I saw that and it came to me. There's a lip on this side and I didn't level the rotary tool. So the top section here was slightly out of focus uh, and it engraved differently, which is why I get that difference. So they do give you this wonderful little um, leveling device here. And when it's in, I should have actually put that on and adjusted the rotary tool to lift it up. Um, I knew this, uh, but I didn't do it. So what I'll do is I'm going to do the, uh, the sugar one. And of course, I will make that adjustment. Now, also different stainless steel. Um, reacts differently. So uh, I have been reading some posts and there's people that have bought uh, dollar store uh, stainless steel products or even from Walmart. Um, they each have like a different, um, a different finish on them, uh, a different grade to them. Uh, so that may also affect it as well. But the bottom of this does look nice and sharp. So um, and it's got a gradient to it, and that gradient is my out-of-focus line. So we'll do another one up and uh, see how it turns out. All right, so second time's a charm. <laughs> uh, so we'll see how that cleans up. Uh, it looks uh, quite even from what I can see here. Uh, so we'll clean it up and final results. Okay, final results. So of course we did see what happens when you don't level. <laughs> you get the uh, slight gradient there. And the sugar one. Uh, actually turned out uh, better. So you can see there, 
uh, nice and dark. And that's on there. That's on there permanent. So that's not coming off. So uh, that's it. If you want to do uh, stainless steel, uh, I would first recommend you do a grid pattern. Uh, very similar to the tile here, very similar to uh, the, this kind of wood here that I did as well. Uh, so you want to just make sure and then, you know, have that stuff set off to the side so you can refer back to it uh, when you're doing different kind of things. If you're doing a mug, uh, let's say you want to do a, a Yeti mug. Uh, I did one here. Uh, this one was actually in the lost and found. Uh, and uh, I put on uh, the uh, the dragons, train your own dragon, how to train your own dragon. Uh, and I found that it was a little bit, if you can, if you can see around the edges, it, I don't know how hard, how, how clear it's going to show up, but there's a little halo around the cutouts and it's dark. So it did go a little bit too heavy on that. So I was playing around with it, and you can see Toothless down there at the bottom. Uh, he is a little bit uh, shinier, uh, very similar to the actual Yeti emblem. So this was cutting the power back so that you didn't go in too deep on there. Uh, now, what I probably should have done is just did a grid pattern on this, but uh, I wanted to do something fancy. Um, and I was a little bit heavy on the power. So uh, doing a grid pattern is definitely going to uh, help you out. You're going to be able to refer back to that uh, just to be aware that some materials, some like materials, uh, aren't going to react the same way. So there will be some variance in there. Uh, so that's it. Uh, if you want to check out any of our other videos, uh, you can um, go back and uh, pull them up, uh, all the Xtool videos. Uh, if you are interested in the X tool, uh, you can use the link down in the description. Uh, it does help out our nonprofit animal rescue here, uh, and it helps you out as well. Uh, so click on that link down in the description. Have a look at the equipment they have, uh, and uh, any questions, like always, put them down below. Take care, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.